Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Dakota here. In this video, I want to talk about uh, 1 John uh, chapter 1, verse 6 through verse 9. It says, um, If we say that we know God and walk in darkness, uh, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, uh, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ His Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Uh, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, um, what does that, what do those verses mean? Uh, first of all, uh, verse 8, many people uh, misinterpret that verse because they don't take the time to um, to research, um, you know, who the Apostle John was writing to um, and what was going on in that situation. Um, first off, he was writing to a group of churches in, in uh, Asia Minor um, and uh, they were being infiltrated by uh, by Gnostics. Um, there was Gnostics, um, you know, coming in and attending their, their church services, their prayer meetings, and trying to um, spread their Gnostic heresies. Uh, one of those, um, one of the most prominent, uh, most well-known uh, men of the, the Gnostic um, sect at that time was a guy named Serinthus. He was a, a Jewish man from Egypt who actually moved and he, he came up to Ephesus where the Apostle John was the, he was like the head bishop of all of the, um, all of the churches, all the assemblies throughout the city of Ephesus. And, um, and so this guy was spreading his Gnostic heresies. That's actually why John wrote, you know, the Gospel of John to defend the, the deity of Christ um, because the, the Synoptic Gospels were already written and there was so much, so much Gnostic heresies going around that uh, he was led by the Holy Spirit to write the Gospel of John and, uh, and then later uh, the book of 1 John. And uh, so anyways, um, if you read uh, John Wesley's uh, Bible commentary, he talks about how 1 John 1, 8 is uh, referring to the Gnostics who actually if you look into what they believed they believed that they could sin as much as they want and still be perfect in the sight of God because they believe that the flesh is inherently evil and they also believe that the entire physical world is uh, inherently evil and that uh, the spirit is always pure regardless of, of what the flesh does so you could you know sin as much as you want and your spirit would still be pure which is really a lot like um, a lot of the theology being taught today with uh, you know people saying that we have this positional righteousness even if even if we're not you know um, righteous in our practice that God somehow sees us through the blood of Christ and that he he sees us as if we're just as perfect as as Jesus is but uh, you know first John 3 7 says uh, little children let no man deceive you he that doeth righteousness is righteous, even also as he is righteous, the he there being Christ. So unless you are Christ-like, you are not uh, righteous uh, or considered righteous in the eyes of God. Um, and so if you read 1 John 1.8, um, the Apostle John was referring to the Gnostics who believed that they had no sin even though they were willfully sinning as as much as they wanted to um, and if you read um, if you read that verse in context with verse 9 it's clear that 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 verse is not saying that it's impossible to be totally free from sin and that you know you have to have you have to admit that that you're always going to have a little bit of sin otherwise if you don't admit that then somehow that makes you really prideful and it means that you're not even saved which is you know how most Christians would interpret that verse these days but verse 9 tells us um, clearly that if we confess our sins 
he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So being cleansed from all unrighteousness obviously means that you're, you, you no longer have any of that unrighteousness in your life. You're not just forgiven of it, but you're, you're set free from it. You know, that's, that's the whole purpose of salvation. It, according to Matthew 121, is for Jesus to save his people from their sins, not save them in their sins. You know, if you are, uh, if somebody is drowning and uh, you want to save that person from, from drowning and, and, and dying, you're going to have to take them, get them out of the water. You can't save them while they're still underwater, you know. You're going to have to uh, get them back on dry land. And uh, that's what, you know, that's what salvation is. It's, it's not just justif uh, being justified, but it's also, you know, being sanctified goes hand in hand with that. And uh, just to prove this point a little bit farther, First uh, John 1 9, the Greek word for cleanse is uh, katharizo and the same Greek word is also used in 2 Corinthians 7 1 when it says um, dearly beloved seeing therefore that we have these promises let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit um, perfecting holiness in the fear of God so the word for cleanse in that verse is, is katharizo as well and so it's clear that that verse is talking about, um, you know, being, being cleansed and having perfect holiness um, in the fear of God, or at the very least working towards that goal. And so, you know, if, if, you, are, if, you, if you are struggling with sin, um, then at least fail forward. At least, you know, try as hard as you can to continually um, walk with the Lord and become more and more sanctified um first john um chapter three it says in in verse five um it says and ye know that he christ was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin so he he was manifested his his goal was to come and and you know die so that he could redeem um a holy people you know save his people from their sins not in their sins so uh hope the video blessed you and uh if you liked it then uh please um like the video and subscribe and also uh share it on social media get the word out there to other people um and god bless